If they asked me, I could write a book about the way you walk and whisper and look. Joining us now on our Book Talk segment, great to welcome internationally best-selling author Karen Slaughter. You've got a brand new novel out. This one's called uh, Pretty Girls, and she joined us on the telephone today. And Karen, good to talk with you. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Yeah, good to have a chance to chat with you. First of all, congratulations on the great success of, of your previous books. And this one's a little bit uh, different kind of venue, isn't it, that you're writing about here? Yeah, well, you know, this is my first novel that doesn't have detectives or medical examiners who are narrating the story. It's right. told by two sisters, Claire and Lydia. Claire's the youngest, Lydia is the middle child, and there was a third sister who disappeared 24 years before the story starts. Yeah, it is a little different because you've written a couple of uh, series. People know your, your writing, people that uh, may not be aware. Or you have two series out, right? Will Trent and Grant County. So this is this is a little bit different, uh, although it, it still involves, involves a crime, though, right? Yes, it does. Um, you know, this being a thriller, it opens up with a crime that kind of shakes things up. But uh, it, it does have that usual thread of my stories where it's really character-driven and has lots of twists and turns to keep people surprised. What uh, what gave you the idea for uh, kind of departing from the from the usual what you've done before, just to, to kind of keep keep it interesting for yourself, or what gave you the idea for this book? Yeah, well, absolutely to keep it interesting for myself. And I've been writing about crime, as I said, from the detective's point of view. I wanted to write about the other side of that. What happens to a family when something horrible, unspeakable happens? How do they go on for that? From that, um, how do they recover? And in some cases, how do they continue even if they can't recover? Yeah, it involves, like you said, there's three sisters. One is killed, but these two sisters have gone on different paths of their lives, haven't they? One, one obviously more successful than the other, right? Yeah, and, you know, that's generally the case that uh, <laughs> family members are different. I say that as the youngest sister, so, of course, I'm going to say the youngest <laughs> is the most intelligent and beautiful. <laughs> well, is it based on any particular case you may have read about somewhere? Or do, you, do you take anything from the headlines, or how do you come up with the, uh, the plot line? Unfortunately, it's something that happens with fair fair regularity. You know, we all watch the news. We all see these stories about a young college student, uh, usually a pretty girl, blonde hair, blue eyes. She's walking on, on her own down the street, and no one ever sees her again. And that's a story that always has haunted me, you know, that never finding out what really happened to a family member. How do they deal with that? How do they recover from it? Yeah, one uh, sister is, uh, just using your words here, a, a trophy wife, right, lives in Atlanta. And the yeah. other one, uh, Lydia, she's a, a single mom and she dates an ex-con. So yeah, that is two sides of the track, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, it was such great fun riding them. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm the youngest of three sisters, so I kind of worked <laughs> out my demons there, paid them back for some of those mean things they did to me when I was little. Claire could be part of your other two sisters, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when, you, when you write those two types, of different characters. Uh, obviously, you, know, you use your imagination as, as a successful novelist, but but how do you go about doing that? Do you write out a, a full plot line first, an outline, or what, what's your process for fleshing out characters? Mostly I keep it in my head. You know, I think about them quite a lot before I actually sit down to start writing and get to know them as people because my characters seem very real to me. I want my readers to feel like, oh, this is someone I know, this is someone I went to high school with or neighbor I, I just i want it to feel like you're not reading a book but you're immersed in a world and these two sisters have to obviously come together after a long time apart so you you're also writing about a relationship there that uh, that was obviously strained so that, that's kind of interesting i guess as a novelist to, to write that type of uh, dialogue right so it is, and you know, finding the one thing that would separate two sisters. I mean, it's it's so common. They've written songs about it. It's a guy, um, and so the, they are estranged when we meet them in the first part of the book. But you know, since something really shocking happens in that first opening chapter, they have to figure out how to work together to understand what's happening, and you know, hopefully, find out what happened to their sister. And then the title, "Pretty Girls." Uh 
Well, what does that mean exactly for, for, the, for the listeners? <laughs> well, the original title was The Truth About Pretty Girls, and my publisher wanted to shorten that. Um, <laughs> but, it, it, you know, it's a double-edged sword, being an attractive woman, especially in America. Um, and, you know, they all are, Claire is a beautiful woman, and she's a kept woman. She's this trophy wife, and there's more to her than meets the eye. And I think that's an assumption we make with someone's very attractive, especially a woman. We just assume that she's everything is on the surface and Claire has a great depth to her um, Lydia unfortunately is one of those women who would make a snap judgment about someone like Claire so it takes her a little while to understand that her sister actually is still the same person she knew she just dresses better right <laughs> well it's a great uh, again idea for a book and a, a bit of a departure but still involves a crime is there a difference in, in the style of, of writing when you when you wrote this book as opposed to the other ones which uh, are more from a detective standpoint or is it kind of basically the same when, when you when you're describing a, a crime or writing about a it's crime. absolutely different you know when i'm writing my will trent series he's a, a agent with the georgia bureau of investigation so it's common for him to talk to suspects and witnesses and be at crime scenes and look into forensics but with claire and lydia you know they're they're just one is a, a housewife and the other one is a small business owner and they really don't have any reason to be doing these things so i had to find a way throughout the plot to keep propelling things forward, to make it believable that they were making the choices that they made. Uh, I'm not one of those um, writers who likes to write the, the, a really light, too feisty gal, solving a crime sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I wanted the reader to say, yeah, that's a choice I would make. Or if it's not a choice they would make, it's a choice that they understand the character would make. Yeah. It was a great, great, uh, great premise for a story and, and great characters in it. I did want to ask you before we run out of time and just reading your notes, uh, you're doing a great thing there. I know uh, uh, particularly down here in Florida, you know, we, we want to keep the libraries going. You're the founder of the Save the Libraries organization, so that, that's, a, that's a great thing you're doing. Well, thank you. And, you know, Florida needs help. Florida needs their libraries to stay open. If people who care about children should also care about libraries. They're the backbone of our education system. Yeah, always uh, as a kid uh, in the summertime particularly, you spend a lot of time in the library. It's a good place to be. Uh, I'm not sure kids know that as much anymore, but hopefully your organization will uh, get the word out, and that's a good thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Karen Sloan, great to talk to you. Again, the name of the book is Pretty Girls. And uh, do you have a website, uh, Karen, you want to direct people to and contact I you? I do. It's Karen, KarenSlaughter.com. It's Karen with an I, and I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. Great. Karen, pleasure talking to you. Hopefully we can do it uh, when your next book comes out. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids. Right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, Please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or DougMilesMedia.com.